Hey everyone, this is Kevin Alexander with AltaVista Technology. We're going to take a look at the foundation of item replenishment and planning inside of Business Central today. So let's take a look at uh, the basis for all that, which is inside of the items themselves. So we'll pivot over to our, our item list and we'll use uh, this first item on the list as our example today. Uh, this Athens desk. Now, inside of an item card, there's lots of you know attributes and parameter settings, and we're going to focus today uh, down here on the replenishment section and the planning section. So, let's, so first under replenishment uh, is the items uh, replenishment system, and this is really uh, letting the system know how this item. Is replenished so uh, can it be purchased do we do it through production orders transfers so maybe we're uh, transferring material or inventory from another location to our distribution facility or by assembly so uh, there's a concept of assembly orders and production orders uh, in business central we won't be covering those today but needless to say those are when we're when we're putting things together so we're going to focus on uh, items today uh, that we purchase for replenishment. Now, uh, the simple part of that is we simply just need to call out uh, that it's uh, replenished. Now, you can add other parameters uh, to this item uh, to help assist when we get to the planning worksheet. So you can add uh, calculated lead time and such uh, here as well. And if the that item uh, happens to have a default vendor and that uh, I, that vendor, I should say, has a uh, vendor, uh, an item number of their own, uh, you can provide that here and this will show up in our, our planning worksheet. And if we were using uh, a replenishment system of production or assembly, uh, we would focus on these areas over here as well. Now, under planning is how we tell the system, the planning uh, engine, uh, to make uh, recommendations to us. So the reorder policy here is uh, probably the key setting. Under the reordering policy, there are four uh, types. Fixed reorder quantity, uh, and that is uh, we're simply telling the system that every time uh, we reach a uh, reorder point over here uh, to please go ahead and order a specific amount. Uh, the next is maximum quantity. So we always want to bring our inventory up to a maximum amount. Uh, you can do order, uh, looks at each order or sales order as it comes into Business Central and uh, makes recommendations on an order by order basis. And then there's lot for lot. And lot for lot uh, is similar to order, except uh, in this case, what we're asking the system to do is uh, look at sales orders in a specific time frame and group together uh, demand for items, uh, for you know particular items, and uh, make recommendations on, a hand, on how to handle those. And so today we're gonna set our planning to order. And we're gonna look at the difference between order and fixed order and just how it affects the reordering um, planning sheet. So, so let's, uh, on this particular uh, item, uh, we're gonna focus on this reordering policy here. So let's go over to the requisition worksheet and you can create uh, many different worksheets here, uh, as many as you'd like inside of Business Central. So you might have different uh, worksheets for maybe different types of items or different locations. So different planning parameters or different ways that you uh, replenish items. You might have a sheet for uh, items that you buy versus maybe items that you assemble. Uh, and once we're in this requisition worksheet here, uh, we can come over to process and I'm gonna click calculate plan. And this can bring up some parameters uh, for this for the, rec the worksheet, but we're going to click OK here and keep it basic. And what you've noticed is that this first line uh, is uh, been populated in our requisition uh, worksheet, 
uh, for our item, that 1896S, and the action messages is asking us to cancel the purchase order uh, because it isn't finding any subsequent demand for the item. So it's uh, making a recommendation uh, to cancel that PO that that belongs to. Now let's go. Uh, I'm we're gonna I'm gonna move over over here to another tab here in a moment. We'll go back to our item card, and I'm gonna go into another tab and let's create a sales order really quick uh, for a customer for that particular item, and just see what happens here. So let's click. Uh, new here and we'll click uh, or start a new order I should say and down here uh, we'll just add that Athens desk really quick and let's make that seven of those a number that we will stick out well for us when we're looking at the planning worksheet and let's make sure that we release the order uh, so that it's recognized by the planning engine now let's jump back here to our item card and let's go back into uh, our requisition worksheet and let's reprocess again. Notice now we have two lines in here because we're order for order, meaning it's evaluating this item based on sales orders. Uh, we're seeing that it's making a recommendation for us to purchase seven here uh, because it's going to tie that seven uh, to uh, that sales order. And we have an open purchase order uh, that it's recommending that we cancel. Now, the you know one of the secrets or planning is being able to, to provide decision support right right here uh, for uh, the planner. And so, looking at this, you might say, well, why don't you just increase your other purchase order to seven? And you could very well go ahead and do that as well. Uh, but since the order policy, right, is set for order for order, it is letting us know that uh, I need an order to associate to um, our open sales order for seven and that this other one should be canceled. So let's go back to the item and let's see what happens when we change the reorder policy here from order to fixed reorder quantity. And there's already some uh, parameters over here. So it's letting us know uh, to reorder when we get to 25 and uh, that we should order up to 50 here. And so let's go ahead and we'll uh, go back into our requisition worksheet now from there and let's rerun or recalculate the plan. And notice now we have this single line in here that's saying, hey, we recognize that that item is below its reorder Point, please order 50 and notice that it's not asking us to cancel right that other particular uh, purchase order that we had in there for three uh, and reason being right is that we haven't on this item uh, we haven't specified uh, any uh, maximum inventory levels and such but those would be impacted uh, uh, as well um, had we had we done that so uh, we're going to go back uh, one last time, and we're going to uh, change this back reorder uh, policy back to order and rerun that uh, requisition worksheet again. And we're going to go ahead and process that. And what now that we're here, uh, what we really uh, want to be able to do is uh, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to ask the system to carry out the action messages. So it's going to uh, create a new one and cancel one at the same time in the system. So we'll go ahead and say carry out the action messages. Um, if we wanted, we could go ahead and print those. So uh, let's take a look at those. We'll click OK. It's going through uh, doing the work for us. And uh, here's that PO. We can take a look at that. Here's the PO that it's going to create. So this one got created for us, and uh, that other one got canceled, and we, we can tell that because if I come back here to process and calculate the plan once again, uh, we'll have no uh, items that require any action. So 
this is really the kind of the beginning of demand planning in uh, Business Central and how we set up our items and how the requisition worksheet, right, uh, interprets the planning engine's results uh, for the things that we need to do. So I hope uh, uh, you found this uh, video useful. Please contact us if you'd like to learn more about Business Central. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. And if it's your first time with us, click that subscribe button to stay current on all our content. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.